in a trustless trust environment where I don't trust you, you don't trust me, we can trust the smart contract to enforce the terms of the contract, then the cost of enforcement becomes very low. And the benefit of this is that hopefully we can write many more contracts which we can then enforce. Smart contracts are basically computer programs that execute the terms of the contract. Now, computer programs previously couldn't do that because they couldn't touch typically what the contracts deal in, which is money. Now, the banking system could write, in many ways, smart contracts because they have direct access to the banking system. But previously, there wasn't a mechanism for anyone to write a contract which could directly touch the monetary system. The benefit of a smart contract is the cost of enforcement of the contract tends to zero. Now, the bad news about the smart contract is once you get into the smart contract, and it's a computer program, don't forget, that runs on this blockchain in this cloud called the internet, then you can't stop it. If we decide to move to contract and we have an agreement and we can uh, we can articulate the terms of the agreement in sufficient detail to write what's called a smart contract, which is basically a computer program that en encapsulates the essence of those terms of the contract, then we upload it into the blockchain of the cloud and we execute and we let it run. So the good news is that the contract itself is not biased towards you or me. And if in the case where there is a dispute, the contract will auto-enforce. So smart contracts are not applicable for everything. They're only applicable in those areas that there's sufficient specificity that you can specify exactly what you want to do. Now, the area that is most prevalent is gambling, or the more polite term we use now is prediction markets based on whether or not tomorrow is going to be sunny, rainy, cloudy, or whatever, we could set up a wager right now that if tomorrow is sun sunny, do this. If it's cloudy, do that. If it's rainy, do, do something else. Or sports betting. So these are very simple initial kinds of smart contracts where the outcome will automatically pay out to a certain beneficiary. For uh, initiatives like One Belt, One Road, these, again, these huge trading, global trading platforms, then the question becomes, who do you trust? And right now, the trust is typically one-sided. You'd have to trust either the merchant or, for example, the buyer. Now, in the case where uh, if we want online commerce to explode, then can we put the funds in escrow, for example? If I buy a product from you and I put funds in a smart contract, and the smart contract basically monitors the package as it's shipped from the producer to my front door. When it arrives, that smart contract automatically pays out to the merchant. Again, you'll have, again, a different style of business. With the innovations such as the W3C Web Payments, in tandem with Bitcoin, in tandem with smart contracts, the goals are really quite clear. The goals are to reduce online fraud, to reduce the cost of compliance, and to make the rate of trade or the rate of business increase when there is a more trusted commercial environment. And so when you will avoid things like credit card fraud, for example, the cost of fraud to the credit card system is fairly huge. And so these new fintech innovations are designed to try and reduce the frictional costs of actually doing business by reducing the cost of routing the money from A to B, such as Bitcoin, like routing a cent from me to anywhere in the world. If that tends to zero, different things occur. We can't do that with the current financial system because the cost of remittance is quite high. But then when you have that token, when you have that Bitcoin, that you can start doing these types of translations. So what? Well, the so what is when you write a smart contract. So in summary, I would say that the awareness through interviews like this is important. Number two, to avoid terminology, which is confusing. Smart contracts itself is probably a misnomer. It's just a digital contract. The third is actually the people who are skilled in understanding the pros and cons of what a smart contract can do and should do, which is an ethical dimension, that currently also are technically literate, who can actually code up the smart contracts. Mm -hmm.